All right, guys. So I thought that was a really cool video. Um, obviously, that's a uh, very, very, very expensive place to live, but he's also driving a very expensive car. Um, but again, if you have big goals in life, you can set them for yourself, and maybe someday you can have an apartment that literally transfers your car <laughs> to like your next like to your apartment, which is just ridiculous. But um, obviously, something like that, you have to really dream big. Okay, but uh, you know it is possible if you put your mind to it and get there at some point. So um, today we're taking a look at analyze, interpret, scatter plots. Okay, uh, this is a good section. It's a little bit um, of applying different things uh, that we've learned so far with slope and y-intercepts. So we're gonna jump right in here. Is the slope positive or negative approximate the y-intercept? As it's going to the right, you see how it's dropping. Okay, that means my slope is negative. Now it says approximate the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where it hits the y-axis, so right there around 5. Your y-intercept is 5, or we can write that as 0, 0,5. Okay, if you're asking for the point. Slope, here. We're going down to the right again. Okay, it's not as steep, but it's still going down to the right. That's still negative. As far as the y-intercept goes, right here, negative 7. So 0, negative 7. Lastly, it's rising up here, going up to the right. Here's a positive slope. My y-intercept um, is hitting around 1. So my y-intercept is 1, 0, 1. Now, find a slope between the following two points. I'm going to do the first one. I'd like you guys to try out B, C, and D on your own then, because uh, I think you guys can more than handle this. Your formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Every point is an x1, y1, x2, y2. You're plugging things in. So m equals y2 is negative 3 minus y1, which is negative 4. Divided by your x2 is 1 minus your x1 is negative 2. Now these problems are difficult when you have a minus a negative because your you know, double negative makes it positive. If you have to, don't hesitate to use this. Negative 3 minus a negative 4. It'll do it for you. One, if you have to double check yourself, there's no shame in doing that. Okay, one minus negative two is one plus two. That's three. There's your slope. Okay. So if you guys have got to this point, which is only four minutes in the video, please pause it, take a look at B, C, and D on your own. Okay, and try them out. Okay. Down here at the bottom, we're going to take a look at what a scatter plot looks like. Um, a graph of plotted points that shows the relationship correlation between two sets of data. We will be only be working with linear relationships, so we're looking at only straight lines, basically. The table below shows the calorie count in grams of saturated fat of popular McDonald's menu items. Okay, so we've got Big Mac, Quarter Pounder with cheese, Bacon Deluxe, all the way down. Graph the scatter plot to the right. Use calories on the x-axis. So calories down here. Um, and use uh, saturated fat in the y-axis. Okay. Now, you'll notice for calories, it goes up to about 600, my highest. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, I'm going to make each of these worth roughly around 50. So, here's 50, 100, 200, 4, 300, 400, 300, 400, 500, 600. Okay, so each of these little dashes I made um, 50. All right now, you, your graph might look a little different, but I just chose X. It makes it a little easier to see it. And as far as saturated fat goes, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 going up. 13 is my maximum. We'll make each of these 1. 1, 2, 3. It just works out better this way. You want to always label stuff. So if you get to the keystone, you get something like this, you want to label everything properly so it, it all matches up. Now I'm just plotting some points. Big Mac is at 10 and 550. So 10, 550 is right over here. There's my first point. Um, 12 and 520. Okay, I'm going to pause the video quick just to kind of plot these points so we can come back to it. Okay, so um, I know I just paused it, but come back here to it now. I just have the plots pointed. Everything's labeled for you. Now, 
all you're doing is just plotting the points as you see them fit. Okay, so um, that's a scatter plot. Now, what you can see here is a positive correlation. The more calories I have, the more saturated fat that my food has, which makes sense. I mean, that's something that, obviously, if you have fast food, um, that's going to take place as well. Okay, this is what a scatter plot looks like. It's a bunch of plot points plot all around the place. All right, we're going to go to the back page. <clears throat> now, um, the scatter plot you create on the previous page should look approximately linear. Points are not in a curve or random pattern. One of the benefits to a scatter plot is that it allows us to predict, within a reasonable domain, y values from specific x values. To, to make a somewhat accurate prediction, we need to draw a line of best fit and find the equation of that line. So how to draw a line of best fit. Important to note for everybody. It's your, your line of best fit might not be the person beside you's line of best fit. You might be off a little bit, but you should be in the same ballpark. Okay. So, for number one, look at the points and determine if they are trending upwards, positive slope, or downwards, negative slope. Draw a straight line that mimics the data trend. By definition, when you find the sum of the distance from each point to the line of best fit, it should be the smallest number possible. For the following scatter plots, draw a line of best fit. So here we see our points are rising up. All you are doing is drawing a line that goes roughly through it the best you can. Okay, it's not going to be perfect, but the best that you can. Okay. So this one's trending upward, positive slope. Here it's trending downward, negative slope. Okay. Now over here, you see I have this one random point over here to the, down the bottom right. Um, this is something called an outliner. Okay. It's it's a random data set that like it throws off everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to forget about that for line of best fit. I'm focusing up here. Because um, there's no way to draw a line that just drops all of a sudden. Okay? This might be a random occurrence. Maybe like if these were test scores, maybe this was a day when someone was sick or missed class. Um, you get the idea. Okay. So how to find the equation for the line of best fit? Plot data points. Draw a line of best fit like we just did up here. Find two points that the line of best fit goes through. They do not need to be points from the data. So you're picking um, two points. So like if I found a point here and a point there, there's my points. Find the slope between them by using your slope formula. Okay. Um, use one of the points from step two and the slope bound step three to find the y-intercept. So you're plugging it back into y equals mx plus b, and you write out your equation. So um, using the McDonald's problem on the previous page, draw the line of best fit and write an equation for your line. Show all your work. So I'm going to come back here. Now based off of my scatter plot, I'm going to draw a line that I'm doing my absolute best to do. Looks something like this. Okay, now I'm going to pick two points. I'm picking this point um, and this point. This point is 350, comma, 6. This point is 500, comma, 10. Okay, notice that these points that I chose were not the points that I plotted. They were on the line that I drew. So 350... 6, 510, okay? So 350, comma, 6, 500, comma, 10. So now, um, I'm going to go ahead and find my slope, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I got 10 minus 6 divided by 500 minus 350. So 4 over 150. There's my slope, okay? So going back to y equals mx plus b, this is my m. Pick one of these two points. I'm going to go with this one because I like the number 10. 10 equals 4 over 150 times 500 plus b. Using my calculator, parentheses, I'm going to clear it out, parentheses, 4 divided by 150 times 500 gives me 13.33. I'm going to subtract that over. Okay, so let's see here. 10 equals 13.33 plus b. Subtract it over, negative 3.33. Okay, once you have an m and a b, I'm sorry, m, yeah, m and a b, plug them back in. y equals 4 over 150x minus 3.33. Okay. So there's my line of best fit. Now a question for you. Does that negative 3.33 make sense in the context of this problem? Probably not, because it was saying that if you have zero 
um, calories, you're going to have negative 3.33 trans fat or saturated fat. Not the case. But what's neat about this is if I can now extend it, what would the predict, what would, what would be the predict, what would be the predict the amount? Um, predict the amount of saturated fat in grams that a food item would have if it had 400 calories, 700. So for 400 and for 700, all you're doing is plugging this into your equation. Y equals 4 over 150 times 400 minus 3.33. And down here it would be Y equals 4 over 150 times 700 minus 3.33. So using my calculator, I'm going to do parentheses 4 divided by 150 times 400 minus 3.33. So 7.33 grams of, um, what was it, saturated fat, grams, okay? And if I do the same thing with 700, I hit second enter, I can redo my equation, come over here and type in 700, I get 15.33 grams, all right? So um, that gives you a quick idea of what scatter plots look like. Once you finish this up, I do have a practice test available for you today to start working on. Um, but again, keep up the good work. Good luck. We're all counting on you.